Hello everyone and welcome at ISOP Academy. In this tutorial we will go through the whole process of ISOP Outlook Sync installation and configuration. We are running Windows 10 with Outlook 2016, but you can use Outlook Sync with Outlook 2007, 2010 or 2013 version. For more information about compatibility, please have a look at ISOP.com website. Also, please note that there are two options for installation of ISOP Outlook Sync. You can decide whether to use .exe file for easy personal installation or .msi for network deployment, which is recommended for administrators. I have downloaded Outlook Sync for ISO version 12. Once you run the installator, it will ask you to allow changes. Confirm with yes, and installation will start. Please check that Outlook is not running during the whole installation process of Outlook Sync. Outlook Sync requires .NET Framework components, so it may ask you to download them at the beginning of the installation. This process should be automatic and without any of your interruption. Once .NET Framework is installed, you will have to run the installation once more. Again, accept changes for the computer. And in the first step, just select your language and proceed. Now, read the license agreement and agree. In this tab, please check once more that the version of Outlook you are using is the same as detected one. You can simply press Start and search for Outlook, like we do. Outlook 2016? Yeah, seems good. Now it's time to decide whether to install Outlook Sync for current user only or for all users within this computer. We will proceed with current user only. And now it's time to fill your email address, which will be used in Outlook Sync and your password. There is an option to use Outlook Sync only for group or data, like calendars, contacts and so on, but it's recommended to synchronize all data through the new profile. Once we will proceed to next step, Outlook Sync installation will try to obtain configuration from iSorb server using iSorb Smart Discover technology. When this is not configured properly, you will have to use manual setup and specify host name of the server, ports, and encryption of the connection. Well, this just happened in our environment, so let's have a look how to configure the connection and the profile. Profile name is just name which will appear in a list of mail profiles of Outlook. No need to change it. Display name should be your name, which will then appear once you send an email. Now let's configure connection details. Username should be pre-filled automatically. Confirm your password and specify hostname of your ISOP server. You can also decide which type of connection you will use. I will continue with the SSL. No encryption is really not recommended at all. Once you will select the SSL connection, port number may change automatically. So let's test the connection. Yeah, everything seems good. So we can move on to the next step and configure the SMTP connection details. I will as well use the SSL connection, test it and proceed to the next step. Installation folder is fine. So let's continue. Great, ISO Outlook Sync has been installed successfully. Last thing to do is to enable Outlook Sync add-on once you will start the Outlook. Yeah, here it is. Just approve it and you can start to work with Outlook Sync. Now, this is first use of Outlook Sync on this computer. The whole synchronization process of my account will start and depending on size of account and connection speed, it may take a while. You can see how folders on the left side are being synchronized. And now you can already see that I can go through calendar events, for example, contacts, or even tasks where all the folders are already synchronized. Now let's get back to Outlook Sync itself. There is a section for Outlook Sync at the beginning of the Home tab. 
you can open Notification Center, where you can see current synchronizations, session log with all items, or ignored items with some issues. Next to it, Folder Sync requests synchronization of folders structure in Outlook Sync, while Synchronize button requests synchronization of current folder and items in there. At the end of the ribbon, you may also find ISORP Sync tab with further details. To configure which folders to synchronize, go to Settings here. On the first tab, there are some basic login and connection settings. Advanced is dedicated to administrators for detailed configuration. And the tab we are looking for is Synchronization. Here, we can easily define which folders would be automatically synchronized on background and which once we visit them. Using right-click, you can also prioritize folder synchronization. Further, in the settings, you can also customize appearance, work with license and locks, and other stuff. License for Outlook Sync is managed by ISORP Server Administrator in Client Licenses. Once your account has Client License for Outlook Sync, it should be automatically activated. In specific cases, you can also use offline activation. And last thing to talk about are rules, forwarder, and auto-reply. Using Outlook Sync, you can actually define or modify server-side rules from your account right from your Outlook. And in the same way as you do in your web client, for example. You can also configure forwarder to a specific email address or set auto-reply during vacation. So, that's all about ISORP Outlook Sync installation and configuration. For further information, go to ISORP Academy or have a look at our documentation. Thank you very much for your attention and see you later. Bye. Okay, what else? Did you like this video? So leave us a thumbs up and subscribe so you won't miss any other. I also recommend you our next video, which is as well related to Icewarp. See you there. Bye.